Hey folks, so um, this video is actually a brief reflection and semi-review about this book, Our Final Hour. Hour. Um, <clears throat> basically, this book was written by a very famous cosmologist and physicist, Sir Martin Rees, and uh, I always thought he kind of looked like some kind of old vampire dude. Anyway, um, this guy has been around for quite some time, and he's written quite a many, uh, quite quite a few books, uh, including uh, I think it's called Just Six, Just Six Numbers and Our Cosmic Habitat. I think that's the name of the book. But um, <clears throat> basically, he just is a very interesting um, storyteller in a way. He he can take all these different theories and philosophies and sort of portray it in a way that's very interesting and fascinating and puts things in uh, a cosmic perspective. In other words, he puts uh, human life in a cosmic point of view. What's what's this all about? What is what is the point of, you know, life arising? What is the point of civilization and intelligence arising? And then what is the point of um, us getting off the planet? Should we? Or what kind of impact will humanity have in evolution? So, um, these are some of the big questions that he wrote in this book, Our Final Hour. So, a lot of it is actually about what would happen if we failed, what would happen if we ended up destroying ourselves. What are the many, many, let's count the ways. And a lot of the book is about that sort of hazardous terrain that we're entering into, and the hazardous terrain that we've already walked through, including nuclear weapons, bioterrorism, um, and then he also raises critical points in evolution um, as far as, you know, previous points in evolution that could have screwed things up big time. And we are lucky that we have avoided it. For instance, what would happen if the first uh, fish that were evolving into uh, amphibians um, ended up being smited off the earth? I don't know how, but maybe some kind of meteor shower killed them all, I don't know, or wiped them out so they wouldn't be able to reproduce. So basically he's saying, let's look at the dangers, and then examine the potentials. And the book was very well written, he does go over the dangers, um, but there were a few points that were sort of dated. For instance, um, when he brings on about the internet, he questions whether or not the internet will be necessarily a gateway to a world society. It may be, but... In the time he wrote the book in 2002, the internet was still in its, uh, I guess you could say, birth stages, and it didn't necessarily have a powerful impact, as powerful impa impact as it has today. Um, I read somewhere that the number of YouTube viewers during, uh, what's it called again? I don't know, some American Idol lady, she, w she got really popular because she was a great singer. Um, but yeah, the number of YouTube viewers that month... Um, totaled the number of viewers on the internet or something like that or on Yahoo over a whole year, like a decade ago. So the, the number of internet users and the growth of the internet has just been exponential in less than a decade. So basically, whenever you talk about the internet, it can be kind of dated. So that's the only aspect of the book that I thought was a little bit, I don't know, um, out of place. I think the internet is a major aspect of uh, social and global change, but uh, that is a different issue. So, I guess that's something to consider afterwards. But the interesting parts of this book that I would like to talk about um, are mainly towards the end of the book when he starts postulating. Okay, say we survive. Say we survive the next hundred years. What's going to happen then? What's going to take place? Uh, where are we going, and how are we getting there? And he postulates space travel. Are we going to get into space? Are we? Um, is it us, or is it going to be another future robotic civilization that explores the cosmos and not humans? Well, he he kind of states that you know there's a good chance of um, both occurring. In in terms of humans exploring space initially, not in terms of government exploration, but business, and I mean private organizations going out there with economic incentive. And he's, he also cites that in the past, that has been the main drive for exploration, not necessarily any kind of government-sponsored thing, unless it was for economic growth. 
um, if you look at the discovery of the Americas, they weren't based on just, you know, explorers exploring for the sake of just, you know, checking things out. It was mainly the economic incentive to find a route to um, Asia, a, a shortcut, a direct route instead of going all around Africa. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know what exactly it would find as an equivalent to that, but let's just say, um, here, here's another uh, scientific breakthrough, which is also a danger, but he cites may actually help us, um, uh, what's it called, explore or live habitably in, I don't know, Mars or on um, an, an asteroid or a meteor. So it basically, the, uh, the idea of genetic engineering, biology, as in creating plants designed to live on Mars, creating vegetation designed to spread like wildfire on Mars and things like that. Now this also raises, raises uh, social issues, uh, not social issues, but uh, philosophical and moral dilemmas. Do we, do we wipe out any traces of life that may be on Mars? If there is no life, then maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if, if there is life, are we going to just destroy it because of economic incentive? Um, and he also raises the uh, an analogy to the Wild West in America and how we sort of wiped out all, all kinds of cultures and people here, we destroyed a lot of the environment, you know, deforestation, are we going to do the same thing cosmically? And unfortunately he, he, he posits that this may actually occur for some time, and that's one of the unfortunate downfalls, but seeing human beings, I guess to summarize, in a cosmic perspective, we kind of see, and this is what brought, to, this is what uh, came to mind for me, stages in evolution, overall grand processes in evolution, um, the growth of uh, the emergence of life happened relatively quickly. The emergence of complex life, oh, a big, a big uh, hurdle that we managed to get over, of course, and the emergence of mind, and that was another hurdle, I guess you could say, but may, perhaps not as long or as difficult at this point as you know complex life was it took billions of years just for complex life to evolve it took a few hundred million years for mind to evolve and intelligence um, and another leaping point in evolution um, which is also analogous to you know the first life crawling out of the sea and exploding all over the land uh, might be the explosion or dispersion of life across the cosmos and this is the big thing that at least Reese is saying, um, human beings are a part of, and whether or not you want to say that there is life out there, um, whether or not there is life out there, the fact is, for Earth, human beings are playing uh, a semi-important role right now. Whether or not if we died, another species would take over, that may be true. But right now, we are at the verge or the precipice of expanding into the cosmos. We just need a few a little bit longer and a little bit more incentive and we need to be mindful of the dangers that we can come across nuclear biological and then of course cosmic in the long run it may be safer and better uh, Reese argues for humans to go into the galaxy to go into the solar system to be autonomous on different worlds and not necessarily dependent on earth to find means to live off the land and change the land just as life did on earth originally earth wasn't the way it was um, wasn't the way it is now. Um, uh, photosynthesis and the first uh, micro, um, the first microscopic life forms sort of terraformed the Earth. They changed the atmosphere. They made it um, possible for us to exist. And in the same way, are we going to be sort of you know the first little anal analogous to the first bacteria that? that began to terraform the planet and make new life forms possible. So basically this is our cosmic step, you know, um, this is our cosmic step in a, in a grand story of evolution uh, of life on Earth. And hopefully, Martin Rees um, states, will survive and see the benefits of such great technological and cosmological achievements. Um, yeah, so that's basically the book in a nutshell, uh, but I do recommend reading it. It's full of juicy, interesting um, information. So yeah, good book, Our Final Hour by Martin Rees.